So here come the players for the fourth match. And it is the third women's singles for Japan. Minatsu Mitani. For America, Jamie Subandi. thing to do with every match of course is the toss of the coin and players can decide if they win the toss whether they which end of the court they wish to start whether they wish to serve or whether they wish to receive and so it's the change of scoring with every point now counting point per rally and with every big stadium there must be a difference in ends every large arena has a natural air current and therefore will move the shuttle slightly there'll be a slight drift and i personally can't understand why a player doesn't always change ends uh, cho choose ends uh, rather than to serve or receive but not always the case i'll maybe quiz you about that later steen as to why players should still want to serve or receive but anyway as i say this is the third women's singles the fourth match in the overall tie Subandi from the United States of America. But let's first look at Minatsu Mitani. 20 years of age from Ishikawa. And as you can see from her win-loss record this year, that translates into a semi-final when she was promoted from the qualifying event at the Swiss Grand Prix. Lost out in the semi-final to eventual winner Sain and Awal having beaten Bei Yunju in the quarterfinal. Now, her opponent, also a positive win-loss record for the year, but interestingly, not played enough tournaments to appear on the world ranking, so not ranked at the moment. Steen, how many tournaments do you need to play appear on the world ranking? Is it two? I think you, do, you need two, two tournaments yep. to appear. So only played one tournament this year, but obviously did pretty well. Well, here is uh, Mitani, and not only that, semi-final this year from her four tournaments, uh, quarter-final as well. But she's had some very interesting results so far in her young career. In fact, last year was her first full year on tour. Mainly played Grand Prix events and international challenger events, but also played three Super Series as well. And to me, that's very sensible development of a player, not just putting her into the highest tier of tournaments, getting her used to playing challenger events where she's doing well. So the third women's singles, started by the American, Jamie Subandi, up against One, Japanese youngster, Minetsu Mitani. I don't know whether you've had uh, an opportunity, Steen, to watch Mitani very much. Uh, she's a very new player on the world stage, as I was saying last year, first full year on tour. But she won three titles last year, one in, in Romania, in Croatia, and also the Osaka International. But perhaps more importantly is some of the players that she's already beaten. Beat Wang Sin, current world number two, in the first round of the Asian Championships last year. And as I've already mentioned, beat the number two Korean Bei Yung-ju. So she's obviously full of talent. Definitely. I, uh, this is the first time I, I've seen her, uh, her playing live. And um, it's going to be interesting. Not so much this match, as I'm pretty sure that she's going to come out the winner. But uh, also, uh, if she'll be fielded uh, against uh, Denmark in, in the next group match. And... Uh, Generally, her, her style of play, which I, I think is a little bit more attacking than, than uh, I normally would expect uh, a Japanese lady singles player. And when I say
a little bit more. It's not like I think that she's in in style with uh, Tina Baum or Wang Kihan or the just a little bit more than, than the normal Japanese yeah. lady single, who's generally very solid but doesn't make that many sharp shots. Yes, and, and given the fact that we've just been watching doubles, perhaps we ought to explain really the philosophy of singles in badminton and especially women's singles. It's very much about patiently trying to outmaneuver your opponent using all four corners of the court, push them to the back, bring them forward, push them to the back again, make them twist and turn. And once they're slightly out of position, that's when you start going for the winner. Whereas in doubles, we've just been describing in the last match how you try and force a weak reply, force by taking chances. Singles is much more of a patient game, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but uh, in some ways you could sort of um, relate them to each other because it's all about uh, taking time away from the opponent. Yeah. And when you've taken enough time, uh, you, you, you try to to go for the winner, but, but a little advantage could be exploited into a little bit bigger advantage and a little bit bigger, and then you have the chance for, for scoring your own points. Run of seven straight points from two, three adrift. Ooh. Well, creative idea, but missed the line. And that's gone long of the back line. And therefore, nine straight points to go to the mid game interval with an eight point advantage. Uh, it's nice to see her uh, smiling, but what does the coach say in a situation like this? I have no idea. <laughs> Steve, Absolutely you're no our idea. expert coach. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything to say. Che cheer up a little bit. Uh, she was smiling herself, and, and I think she knows what what to expect from this match. Um, she's going to get a beating. So, uh, yeah, enjoy it. She's definitely not used to playing in these holes. We can see that. Yeah, just three minutes to get to the mid-game interval. And the first three matches in, in, in the, the overall team match ha has actually been matches that you can use if you were a Japanese uh, player or Japanese coach, you can you can see that there's some use for it. You can practice new things. I think this match is just gonna be something that you want to get over with because there's a too big difference in, in, the, in the playing level. So, just expanding on that though, Steen, because that's a fascinating comment to me. You know, it. Is it a is it a case of actually w with the American that she's so outclassed that she's not able to enjoy this experience and perhaps uh, not only not enjoy it but not really learn anything from it? I don't think she'll be able to learn anything from it. Uh, no, she played a very good rally here and scored her fourth point. But, uh, be wrong it could be that she's just uh, a little bit nervous but um, to be able to learn you, you have to be uh, a little bit closer to to your opponent and, yeah. and, and I mean she's played one tournament this year so what is it uh, where is it she will use what she's learning here I don't think she'll be able to, to use it uh, anywhere of course uh, I didn't cat catch her age do you have the age uh, of, uh, yeah she's uh, 22 22 so if she was like 16 or 17 she would be able to use it to use this experience playing in a big hall and probably getting to play bigger tournaments but um, I would doubt it it's always interesting it's a, a fine line isn't it I'm, I'm sorry to relate to football again but I can remember when the England manager selected Scott Carson as England goalkeeper for 
the final qualifying match for the European Championships and everybody was very surprised at the selection and the poor guy had a nightmare and psychologically it almost destroyed him where is Scott Carson now I know he's just been named in part of the squad for England uh, squad for uh, the summer but you know it it's a question of how the player reacts do they do they love the experience or do they feel the pressure of it and and therefore get crushed by it almost yeah and, and you often have that dilemma should you take a young player into the team i know uh, from the danish uh, point of view victor axelson was uh, uh, was part of the team i think at the last thomas cup or he was at least with the team That's in, right. in malaysia and um, and he was yeah. only 16 at the he time he was 16 at the time so uh, being with the team was definitely good but i also think that it was a good idea not to let him play any matches because there's no need to he's going to play a lot of thomas cup matches and uh, time yeah. will come for him yeah finds the line that's a beauty the compliment perhaps we've written her off a little too soon mm, yeah but still I don't think so because the Japanese girl also feels what's going on and she can feel that if she wants to score a point she can score a point so so she doesn't have to go 80% in this match she can just relax and uh, the points are gonna come her way when she decides that they are needed Big gap across courts from that final smash and 11 game points. Good cross course slice there. So bandit. And, uh, opportunity missed on that final one, though, so, and it means the opening gate to the Japanese number three singles player Natsu Mitani 21-10 yep, the opportunity was there couldn't make it count coach Kaneko Yonikura not much instruction for her player you know, she looks very relaxed doesn't she Mitani the 20 year old 72 in the world ranking at the moment it has been Three places higher than that. to play back to the net and the sentiment of trying to play a little more a few more net shots is something that I think will serve her well in the American but you've really got to be taking the shuttle a, a lot higher than that late on it again Clearly her best shot. 
Taking it late. Yeah, going for another deceptive overhead. Reverse slice that time. Missing. previous rally steam where she went for the acute angle went for the deception okay she missed by quite a margin but is that something that you would like to see from her going for her shots because as you've already identified you know the likelihood of her actually beating her opponent today you might as well try sh yeah. certain shots go for it she could she, I, I definitely think that's what she's doing uh, she's trying to score some points and, and that's one way of, of looking at it get as many points as you can um, and that's very difficult for, for Japanese players to do anything about because she will play a lot of sharp shots and uh, some of them will will be in just on the line, some will be out and you won't get uh, any rhythm in your own game uh, from a Japanese point of view and you'll sort of feel that it's been it's been almost no game because the, the rallies are very short. Yeah. Which is why, of course, that opening game only took eight minutes. Fault. Oh, fault, fault. fault is called. Service fault called. By our service fault. judge, Rahana de Silva. Racket not pointing in a downward direction. Well, Mitani. Oh, that's on the line. Uh, that'll give her confidence. Wonderful net shot. Second, very, very strong net shot there. A little bit deception. Oh, well, the deficit now to just two points. long so to the mid-game interval with a five point advantage yeah knew immediately it was going to go well well long of that back line Teneko Yonokura Myself now the Japanese singles coach caused one of the biggest upsets in World Badminton a few 
few years ago when she won the gold medal at the Asian Games in 1998. Very graceful player she was on court too. Oh, that's a pity. Just long of the back line. I just thought what a lovely punch clear that had been from the American. A little too long. Totally outmaneuvered. Six straight points. Seven straight points. And that's the th sort of thing that you can't afford. You've got to say, right, this next rally, there's no way I'm letting my opponent win this. I'm going to do everything. I've got to stop this run. Yeah. And this match is a little bit like the, the women's doubles that we saw before. That clearly, Subandi, uh, she's, got the, she's got the racket shots to do it. She just doesn't have the athletic ability to to sort of keep moving, she's not solid, so she has to take the chances, and that makes room for numerous errors. I'm lacking in belief as well, if I'm perfectly honest. No, oh, that's nice. Yeah. It's not just you can see she's not used to playing at this sort of pace of game, pace of rally. Ten straight points now. From eight six. Eleven straight points. See if they cannot afford to give that sort of a run to an opponent. Two points away from the second game. And therefore the match. opportunities to close out the match now for Mitani. Beautiful net shots to finish it off from the Japanese youngster. Well, there's been an awful lot of talk in her home country about the talent of this young lady. And we can quite see, clearly see today why there's such excitement about Minatsu Mitani. She is a talent and she's learning with every single match. And quite frankly today, just too good for her opponent. So 21-10, 21-7 in the margin for the victory in just 20 minutes of play. Second game statistics. Yeah. Well, winners from the net, winners overhead from the Japanese player. Far, far superior than her opponent.
there is confirmation that four of our five matches within the overall tie have been completed and all four have gone Japan's way. Only one last chance now for the United States of America to get on the scoreboard and that's with